Hello and welcome to a brand new game called Surviving Mars. Now, before I get into the game and what it is all about and whatnot, here is your question of the day. If you won a one-way ticket to Mars, would you go? Let me know in the comment section down below. I would love to hear what you have to say. What is your answer? Anyways, let's get into what this game is all about. It is about colonizing Mars. We go from Earth to Mars and we research different technologies and send people over trying not to kill them and be trialed for mass murder all right so uh here we are in a the main menu and what basically we are choosing right here is our mission sponsor and as we can see the difficulty bonus up here the more difficult it becomes the higher the difficulty bonus and basically what this is is well it is depending on your funding and research per soul soul is just a day cycle on mars and the funding you have the rare metal prices and as you can see over there we're gonna use the international mars mission uh, we also have usa blue sun corporation china india europe space y which is obviously spacex for elon musk church of the new ark and russia um Church of the New Ark, I don't know what that is related to at all. And Blue Suns, I also don't know. China, the rockets are probably very cheap and breaks halfway. Uh, Europe is very, um, how can I say, gain funding every time a tech is researched. So you get money in, like, uh, when you research new technologies, you get money and all those things. But I don't want to go into most of these things. I want to choose the International Mars mission. You start out with a lot of, a lot of money. You have extra rockets, you have ro large rockets, um, ro rockets, and yeah, which is also really nice is the two other things, the food supply from passenger rockets increased by 10 times, and rockets synthesize fuel, that means they refuel, and you don't need to, a special building to create fuel. Alright, so let's go ahead and choose that. Uh, commander profile um, is just what we did on Earth, what we, what we were, or still is. We could have, we can be an inventor, hydro engineer, doctor, politician, astro geologist, or rocket scientist. Uh, rocket scientist, I'm gonna choose because we start with an extra rocket and a CO2 jet propulsion. It unlocks shuttle hub and long range transportation, which is pretty freaking cool. I did look at the politician a little bit. Um, the funding has just increased, and Martian pat uh, Martian patents patents uh, is repeatable tech grant that grants funding um that is also pretty cool but i don't really like politicians okay and uh, the company logo okay so there is uh where is it there is brussels sprouts which is cool 18's uh he recommended to paradox the brussels sprouts which is pretty cool um there was another one somewhere i just can't remember which one it was but mars express Obviously, that is Planet Express from uh, what, what's that show called? Futurama. Okay, and over here we have a mystery. It is a storyline kind of thing. As we can see, they select an active storyline for this playthrough. Um, there are random events, and what's also weird is it doesn't really say what these events are. We're going to choose random. It doesn't matter. And there we go. Let's go to the next one. Over here, we can choose uh, what comes along, comes with us, like metals, food, polymers, mechanical parts. These are things we can create on Mars um, and build and harvest and those things. Uh, we can also, I think in the future, we should be able to craft up some of these robots and drones. Drones are basically these little guys that will uh, build and do maintenance for you on the buildings. Prefab buildings are just prefabricated buildings, okay? And we start off with a drone hub, a moisture vaporizer, a vaporator, <laughs> no vaporizer, <laughs> no, the water, no. Uh, Sterling generators are just electricity, and there's some factories there as well. But we're not going to look into that just yet. We are happy with this, okay? The rocket's name is Trust One. The cargo capacity is zero because we already bringing along a couple of things, including a couple of buildings and some other, like drones and other, you know, rovers, whatever. All right, let's go. Now we're going to choose a landing spot, and I'm holding in right-click to move the planet in a rotational... Well, from left to right, right to left, doesn't matter. Um, I wish you could settle, like, on a polar caps, because, I mean, 
if you think about it, that might be the best place for water. I don't know, it's just my opinion. Uh, I'm gonna choose this uh, spot. It has lots of water, metals are uh, very common, and concrete is about... Concrete is the foundations of your of most buildings. We're gonna have a lot of concrete, okay? It's relatively flat, so building might not be a problem. Uh, if you have steep places, it would say, like, I don't know if there is a... Let's see. Steep. There's one. Uh, steep is basically um, when you you have, like, massive amounts of mountains and things. The higher you are up, the more wind, uh, your wind turbines will work, work better. Let's put it that way. Uh, we also, as we can see, there are um, threats, like dust devils. It's like these random tornadoes that just pop up and destroy everything. Dust storms, uh, well, it's basically self-explanatory, meteors and whatnot. We also, if we go like that, cold waves, this place, the, this part, gets really cold. And it has a lot of meteors. Believe me, meteors are extremely deadly. They can crack a lot of things, and then you have some crap to worry about, you know. Let's go ahead and jump right into a game. Alright, welcome to Mars. So, uh, we have some things which we have to worry about, which we're not gonna worry about. <laughs> um, but yeah, so we start off with four orbital probes. These guys scan the areas. Okay, so first of all, the, the game has selected us a great landing uh, spot, which it thinks would be great. Uh, the one problem with this is there is no water. How do I know this? Well, there should be an icon of a little water droplet in it, but I don't see one. Okay, if we go to, if we just zoom out of our mouse wheel, we scroll up, well, down, up, doesn't matter. Uh, we go into the map mode, we cannot move anywhere. This is where we're going to build, and this is where we're going to play. But what we can do with these orbital probes is we can go ahead and scan. and see what, um, what areas can be revealed. Uh, if we can just fast forward, can we scan? Oh, wait, wait, there we go. Scan there, hmm. Okay, how about here? Achieved. Oh, look at that! Found. Oh, thank you, strange lady. We have water over there, but we have concrete over there. I wonder if we have water close by. Hmm. We have two orbital probes ready. Let's go ahead and scan that area. Nothing. Over here? Nothing. Over here? Okay, no, that's not gonna work. Okay, so, um... There goes a meteor. That's pretty cool. Uh, I did play a game and I started off over here, which is actually very great to start. Um, there was a lot of water and things there, but the resources are randomized. Let me go ahead and pause, otherwise the game is running away from me. The, uh, the game randomizes a lot of the technologies, the research, um, the, the, the resources and everything. It is very random. So, your game, if you're gonna play this, if you bought this, play this, you'll see that some of the things are not... It's, basically, the map is exactly the same, okay? Anything else is different. Everything else is different. The events is gonna occur, the resources, the technologies, everything's gonna be different. Okay, so we have this blinking guy over here, the trust one. It is currently in orbit and it wants to land and start supplying us with little drones so we can start building. Let's go ahead and do that, you know. <sighs> okay, let me slow down here for a moment, okay? I was just trying to get a couple of things in. If you're a first time viewer viewing this game and you don't know what's going on, I will slowly go from here on, because it is a lot of information taken, but it's very easy, very, very common um, knowledge. Okay, I'm gonna use WASD on my keyboard to move around, it's just a little bit easier for me. Uh, I'm playing in windowed mode, and my mouse would sometimes go off, as you can see, off screen. If I try to like, oh, there's an emergency, oh no, there I click somewhere else on the other monitor. So, <laughs> uh, just a fair warning, um, this game, even if, yeah, WASD is your best friend. Okay, so we have water over here. If we go get and click on it, it's low grade. It's got 12,000, I'd take it, liters of water. Or, I don't know, 12,699 units of water. We can use a water extractor to get this. Um, there is some metals over here. Over here. Uh, this is a, a anomaly, which our one rover will go and explore. We got some more metals over here, here. Here is some concrete. And here's some more. As you can see, there's only 301 units, but it's a high grade. Uh, this is average, but it's got 469. 
So this should be a good place to start. The problem, the one problem I'm going to have... Wow, this is going to be a challenge. One hell of a challenge. If we land just in between there, we might be able to... Uh, let's see if we can out... Uh, shush you. You know what? I think the most important part is getting concrete first. Okay, water is only needed when we're gonna, going to have humans here. So let's go ahead and do this. As we can see, we have a very big uh, hexagon. I think that's a hexagon. If we turn... Ah, too bad the hexagon doesn't turn along with us. Okay, so... Uh, it's so hard to judge. I think that should do it. All right, I clicked. And if I zoom out, we can see over oh, there is the rocket. If I just play it normally, here comes our rocket. Damn it! And I'm clicking with my middle mouse button, and I can get these cool screenshots. Oh, will you look at that? Doesn't that look beautiful? And we've just landed. Oh yeah, Planet Express. There we go. And it opens up, and here is our first little rover. And following suit, doing a massive Evil Knievel stunt. Well, a few of them. <laughs> wow, how did they program these rovers? I have like millions of dollars worth, and they're just like, I don't know, stunting out of that. Like it's some kind of monster event. A monster, like the drink. Okay, so... um. As we can see, we have the water, but we're just out of range of the frickin' concrete. Just out of range. Hey, welcome back. So I did restart a couple of times the map. And you can just do that by hitting escape and pressing restart, okay? Uh, I restarted. I scanned these areas up until around here. Seeing if there's anything else, there's nothing in these blocks over here. It was quite a crappy start, but luckily we have some over here. Now, if we can look over here, very low grade low grade and here is that water we've seen early well no over here it is they're both low grade but it's got a lot of units we could use and i think this is a great spot to start very great it's relatively flat relatively huge and we have a little bit of a ramp i think we're gonna build a giant solar farm not a solar farm a wind farm over here okay so let's go ahead and land our rocket and we can probably fit it in yeah you know what right here that's fine. Okay, go ahead and fast forward. Down she comes. Repeating the last steps. Great. Okay, cool. There's our little rovers. And let's go ahead and press spacebar. Now it's paused. Okay, now it's paused. Now we need to harvest these, uh, you know, these so-called concrete deposits. How are we going to do that? Well, very simple. We just ra right-click on the empty terrain. You can right-click once to open up this menu. Right-click again. Just close it. Okay, going to open it up. And we are going into production, concrete extractor. Now, this is what we need, okay? It extracts, it requires a couple of things like power and whatnot. So, let's go ahead and see. Let's start with this one. As we can see on the right-hand side, it's showing us consumption, construction cost, status, all that. Um... If we move around, look at the status, available resources, 261.9. Now we can move this around to get the optimal, optimal. But it looks like 261.9 is the best we will have. So let's go ahead and click on it. And there we go. We unpause the game. Now what our little drones are going to do, they're going to drive all the way to these metal deposits. Harvest these guys. Look at them. Look at them go. They're going to like little ants. Yeah. My, my army of drones. Okay, they're going to go ahead and collect some of these metals. And they're going into the rocket to collect some of these polymers, electronics, machine parts to build this concrete extractor. Now, look, 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 look. It is uh, constructing, constructing. Boom. But it's complaining it doesn't have a plug. There's no outlet. The guys can't charge their iPhones. Uh, that just means it doesn't have any uh, power. It's not connected to power. Okay, there we go. It says right there. So, how do we get power? Hmm. Well, right click. We go into power. We can see we got tiny solar panels. We got large solar panels. We got wind turbines, sterling generators, power accumulators, which is just basic batteries, uh, power cables, and a power switch. 
So, uh, I was thinking, why don't we just go ahead? It says base production is five units. And guess what? This guy requires five units. Hmm, five units of power. So, why don't we go ahead and just place... Hmm... Where shall we place this? I was thinking, let's make this our main production area, okay? Then we will have a, like a... If we're going to build uh, habitats and whatnot, uh, domes and things, we can do it down this line over here. Maybe a couple, a couple of lines. Uh, that's uneven terrain, but it's fine, it's fine. We will see what we can do. We will basically do it here, land our rockets here, as we move more to this side. Okay, so let's go ahead and put one solar panel. I'm going to hold shift, put one here. And uh, middle mouse button, or you can press R on your keyboard in order to place... Or, or turn, you know, turn it. So I'm going to turn it like that. And there we go. Okay, so if we unpause. We will see that these little guys are going to go ahead and collect metals. Because if we go check out the construction cost, it's four metals. Okay. So let's go ahead and see how they construct. And how they drive around. Being awesome. Okay, there we go. That one is done. And that one is done. But wait a minute. What is this darkness? If we look at this bar down here, it, it shows us that it's dark, it becomes light, and it becomes dark again. So that is, that's just your cycle of uh, days and nights, okay? There's a day-night cycle in this game. The solar panels will charge batteries or, you know, accumulate power as the sun goes out. And which is pretty amazing about this game, what I love, is the solar panels actually follow the sun. That is really really good that's good in my books of detail i love that little little level of detail now it's still showing that uh, they they're still not plugged in there's no connection well that's where the power cables come in okay uh we can go ahead and click on that uh solar panel but as we can see it actually starts one hexagon or uh sextagon or whatever the one block outside it just needs to be close to the uh, building you need to power, okay? So the, then we just... I'm not holding any buttons or whatever. I can just right-click to cancel. And right-click again to cancel once again. So what I want to do is I want to run this to there. And then straight down to there. Right-click. Right-click again. There we go. As we can see, these guys are connected there. But they will... The drones, they will go, collect that metal, and build that solar power, well, the power cable over there. Okay, we're just waiting for everything to happen. There we go. But it's complaining, there's no power. Well, let's go ahead and turn that off, okay? This is your shifts, some buildings. Uh, am I paused? No, let's go ahead and pause. So, if we can see over here, these are your shifts. Some buildings require actual people to work, but you can choose your shifts as people, you know, work in the morning, evenings, and night times. And this guy is annoying me. I'm just gonna do that because, yeah, that's just a bit annoying. It was just a different radio stations you can listen to. Anyways, uh, but some buildings are automated, like this one. Don't require any people to work in it, but you can choose its shifts when it should work or not. And we're going to choose night shift since our solar panels only work during the daytime. Okay. So let's go ahead and unpause. And yeah. So what is the next step? What are we going to do next? Well, let's go through some things over here. This is your infrastructure. This is your power, production, life support, storage, your domes. This is your basic dome. They get immensely larger, apparently. I haven't got to that part yet. Uh, they... Then these buildings are built inside the dome. All these buildings are built inside the dome. And these things are also built inside the dome. Okay. And they all give various traits and things like, uh, let's take this open air gym. It's exercise and social. Some people coming to Earth or to Mars from Earth requires exercise and social. So that is where we come in. That is, uh, we're gonna, we will build them an open air gym so they can have the exercise and social, alright? And, you know, then they will be happy. And, the best thing is, let me just go ahead and pause because that thing is super annoying. If people get very comfortable on Mars, okay? They live comfortably, they know it is safe, they can rely on us. They will start making children, babies, you know, they're, they're gonna have Martian babies and they will be the first Martian borns. 
and then you don't really need to ship people from Earth. You know, you will still be able to do that, but then you would have your own first Martian born, the first Martians in the history of the Milky Way. So that's kind of what we're going to aim for in this, uh, this series, okay? So let's go ahead and unpause and let this guy work. All right, so now if we look here in the back, we see this roller collecting the concrete deposits, getting in here and creating some concrete here in the back. Man, the level of zooming in this is amazing. Okay, it is creating waste rock and that is the normal uh, concrete. We just saw that our drone just came around and picked up that little rock. Okay, so it doesn't fill up that much. So I was thinking, okay, so what what should we do? What should we do? With, uh, what happens if it gets full there? Well, the building just stops. It just stops working. So let's go to uh, storages over here. We have a universal uh, depot where it would store 30 units of each transportable resource. But I want concrete. I want specifically concrete to get out of there into storage immediately. So I'm going to hold shift like so and like so. So if I unpause, we will see that all the drones suddenly wake up and go and collect these resources over here. Now what you can do, okay, I'm going to pause again, right click and also the metals. I want metals, okay? So what I'm going to do is there's one space apart, holding in shift, click, click, click. These things cost you nothing. These little uh, pads where the resources are coming into, they cost you nothing. Okay, uh, we can do that for food, metals, polymers, electronics, whatever. I like to do this to keep it all centralized, unique and neat and tidy. And what I also like to do is these dumping stockpiles. It's just to, yeah, I'm just going to put down three of them like so. Okay, they're going to take this waste rock, put them in that dumping stockpile. And later we will research technology in order to get, um, we can convert the waste rock, all right? But while this is all paused, there's two very important things we need to do. All right, let's go ahead and zoom out. Now, our rocket in there has a built-in sensor. And what we need to do is go ahead and we can scan more areas to reveal more things. Like our rocket is sitting there on unscanned areas. So let's go ahead and click on that. Now it's going to start scanning slowly, but it will start scanning. So we can also line up up until five different blocks okay uh, that one will be next and then I'm gonna scan those four and moving on so forth and eventually we're gonna build sensor towers which will boost the rate of scanning okay but this is the this is just to discover new resources if you're going to plan to expand I want to expand as far as into there and into here and down this line over here and maybe up until here and there hopefully up until there because we can have a massive amounts of wind turbines which will get a great benefit from the height okay Whew, that was a mouthful now let's go ahead and move, zoom in back here but before we continue on down here is a little beaker or a science glass which is called research let's go ahead and open that up now we can see there is one two three four five different um things we can research okay uh, biotech is basically um, your food productions or whatnot. Engineering is like, you know, f fuel storage, fuel usage. Robotics is all about drones. Physics is, um, well, physics. I, don't, I haven't really delved into that. And then we have our social, which is, you know, more crowdfunding, uh, social things. Uh, we stream things like Big Brother, but just the Mars version and people would get happy and give us money and more money means we can have more rockets transport more goods uh we can do a lot of things do a lot of things okay there's also outsource where in exchange for 200 m that's probably uh mars mars marsians i don't know what the the currency on mars would be but let's call it just Mar marsians uh, funding, our source res uh, researchers will contribute a thousand research in the next five souls or next five days. Okay, so we will spend 200 uh, million or not million, 200 margins in, uh, in exchange for a thousand research, which will help us with our research. Now, 
let's quickly take a look here. What do we need? So, uh, hygroscopic vap uh, vaporators. Um, water production is increased by 50%, that, but that's a, a building specific upgrade. Advanced Martian engines, uh, rocket and shuttles requires less fuel. There is low G drive, which is robotic stuff. And we also have extractor amplifications and then obviously the Mars crowdfunding. I was thinking, why don't we just start with this? The drones and rovers move 25% faster. That sounds like a swell idea. Um, I'm just thinking, what do we else need? Uh, Extractor upgrade. This is an extra extractor upgrade. It would increase the production by 25%, but it will also increase the power consumption by 10 units or 10 power units. Okay. Just remember that these, this is the tech tree, you know. <laughs> um, if I move over the mouse, see how many things we can still research. That is amazing. I love how big this tech tree is. It, it means the game could go on forever and ever. But, um, low to high that's the cost that's what's going to happen these are probably super expensive like 100,000 billion I'm lying I don't know how much how high it would go but uh, yeah and we can queue up about five but it becomes more and more expensive in terms of research okay uh, this robotics already a thousand research per research per soul is 300 they get sometimes boosts we can get boosts for, uh, like if we have a genius colonist on a Mars, then we get a boost. Um, yeah, see over there. Science, uh, science Institute, uh, research labs and outsourcing. Those things will, um, you know, contribute. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, so yeah, I was thinking, let's go ahead and start with the drones. That will be extremely helpful. Uh, extractor, I don't know if we need that just yet. Uh, we don't... I, Moisture va Vaporator, don't know. Hmm. Why don't we do that one? This one. Um, that third, fourth, and fifth. Okay, so we have five things in the queue. Now, I'm going to keep five, always keep five things in the queue. Because when your one rover goes and explore and finds anomaly, scans it, and it turns out to be extra research, it would add to that current research and a little bit extra if you if you have like only one thing in in the research and it discovers the rover discovers something and adds research to here it would probably do like let's say if 1100 it would do 1000 we would research that and if something is not next in queue if it's empty this if this queue is empty that 100 research would go to waste so that is a thing we, we should keep an eye out for Okay, so we have landed on Mars. We have established that we can produce a little, a little bit of um, productions and power, and power cables and whatnot. We can store things. But that's going to be end of this episode. Thank you so much, guys, for joining me here on Surviving Mars. Hope to see you guys in the next episode, and I see you guys next time. Bye bye.